Hi, this is Mike Sandoval from Muse TV for Lewis at Nuke the Fridge. And we are here with Erendina Ibarra from The Matrix Resurrection. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing so good. Super happy to be here virtually with you. <laughs> Great. So now that we've entered The Matrix in this conversation, because we're in the digital world, what was your first, ex what was your first experience of the film? Um, I was in San Jose, California, where I was raised, and I got to go to the movies with my friends to watch a movie that I thought was going to be, you know, any given Sunday, relaxing, popcorn, and that's it. Just watch a good action film. And I was reborn when I left that movie theater. I realized that all the things that made me question everything that all that rebel spirit that I had inside was nothing to shut down but everything to work on and to continue and I always say that when I left that theater is when Erendira the activist was born and um, and basically it's been my you know Trinity has been my hero since day one and I am now on it and can't believe it so crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. And what was the fight fight training like? And what different type of styles of tra uh, fight training did you go through? Well, I my husband is a jujitsu black belt and a taekwondo black belt, and we we do train somewhat at home. But I had never done kung fu before, and I most definitely had never done like a uh, fighting where you have to really watch the frames and like usually all my stunts when it comes to like the the other characters I've done had been like really quick and short. And here there was a lot of training with eighty seven eleven crew and Jonathan Osavio. Like we really worked hard. Um, um, to get the conditioning that we needed in order to resolve things in last minute. And we did a lot of kicking, a lot of fighting, a lot of like a traditional Shaolin style with, but we had the best of the best. We had the best crew. Any of the stunts there were like, the best in the world. So whenever we wanted to ask for, you know, a tip or try and figure out how I could land this kick better, there was always there someone to help and to like lend a good hand or a nice kick to show you how it's done. And, um, and it was, it was quite a blessing. I mean, we had approximately six hours, four to six hours of training a day. Um, when we weren't working, we were in the gym and, uh, and it was just about being ready mentally and physically for whatever Lana wanted us to do. Awesome. And how was it working with, uh, since this is a very visual effects heavy film, how, how much of it was visual effects and how much of it was practical sets and practical application? Well, one of the things that I love about Lana and her style of filming is that it's actually not as uh, VFX-y as one would think. There's a lot of like Lumiere style uh, tricks. Uh, we, she did it a lot during Sense8, you know, where she turned the camera and characters would have to duck and run to the other side and then show up on the other side. And we did a lot of like physical aspects that... Uh, that could be resolved in special effects, but she decided not to. She wanted to actually do it in the moment. So it was awesome to go back to that. It was awesome to see her resolve things without tricks that, you know, normally you'd say like, oh, we'll just fix it in VFX. She's like, no, we're going to get it right here. And then in VFX, we'll polish it. Okay. But we're not going to make it all, you know, it, right now you can literally just, get in front of a microphone and have a computer do all your movements for you the way technology is and she wasn't about that she's about technology in the moment but she uses it more to polish things than to just do things and make things happen so that was exciting because we got to, we got to play a lot on set okay and thank you so much quick blue pill or red pill red pill every day great thank you so much have a great day